Hey everybody, are we live? Are we live? Are we in fact broadcasting? So if you thought that this live stream is on 415, then this was an illusion. This was an illusion. This was the wrong number put in on the wrong slide because the live stream is in fact today. It is in fact right now. So very warm. Welcome everybody. Please YouTube, give me a thumbs up that you are in fact receiving. Please Facebook, give me a thumbs up that we are in fact streaming live on Facebook and live on YouTube. Please give me a quick high thumbs up. Any sign of life, I see people coming on, so please just let me know that you are in fact receiving. This is my live stream today on a Thursday, the 14th of April, not in fact the 15th of April, as um, the slide I've said, but um, we, we, we are here and I want to tell you a little bit about, let's see, well, a couple of things are happening over here at Ari Space Blog. One is that we're almost revealing a brand new, beautiful, shiny website. Really, really excited about it. We've burned the midnight oil in all sorts of parts of the world with a fantastic team. So uh, really excited about that. And uh, please, Facebook, let me know if you're receiving. Please, YouTube, let me know you're receiving. Is everything loud and clear? Is my phantom power on? Yes, my phantom power is on. Facebook is working. Thank you very much, Fred. Okay, so and then I also wanted to tell you a little bit about our jazz class. And um, I talked about jazz a little bit last time. I talked about patterns of jazz. Uh, what questions do you have when it comes to jazz? What wishes do you have when it comes to jazz? What are your... Thank you, Dutchman. Facebook is receiving. Um, so put put into the chat what your experience with jazz is, whether it's new to you. A lot of people often are... Uh, you know, a little bit intimidated by jazz because walking the changes means you need to know some theory. Now, as you know, I love teaching theory and I love teaching theory based on patterns. Not because that means you don't have to learn to read. Not because it means that it's a shortcut and you don't need to learn how theory actually works. On the contrary, theory in my mind is made up of a bunch of little building blocks that show up as beautiful patterns on the fretboard. And we have this wonderful advantage of having an instrument that is really friendly to patterns. You know, if you play flute or if you play, you know, piano to a certain degree too, but, you know, we can move things up and down. We can see key relationships in a way on these instruments as other instruments can't see. So why not use this beautiful thing and fact in addition to learning music theory. So I like to learn music theory through patterns, is what I'm trying to say. And what is sometimes a little bit intimidating for pl people playing jazz or foraying into playing walking bass lines, if that's something that's new to you, is that you are spontaneously composing. You are spontaneously coming up with a bass line. You're looking at scale degree, uh, you're looking at uh, chords, which have relationships to each other. So if you are good at theory, you can chunk things together. Oh, that's all part of one key. Oh, the whole day section, that's a one, four, seven, three, three. Oh, okay, that's a two, five, one, right? So there are certain formulas, certain chord progressions that tend to come around over and over and over. And if you are uh, good in theory, then you will see that right away. And it's a gigantic shortcut, right? So uh, you could say you can learn jazz only if you know theory there's certainly something to be said for that but you could also say you could learn theory through learning jazz right um uh, because one thing when you know when i first you know if, if somebody has never ever played a walking bass line before and there are all these chord changes and now you're supposed to come up with a walking bass line it sounds beautiful and melodic nicely in time and swing feel is something we talk about a lot in this class because it's way more important in my view than the correct notes so those are important too but the real interesting thing is how you make it feel right and we can choose very simple note choices just as long as we make it swing and make it feel good um so but uh you can you can certainly use jazz to learn uh theory and to get better at you know coming up with chord changes uh, interpretation of chord changes on the fly. So that's what we do in that jazz class. And you can see down here on the ticker uh, what the page is that it leads to. That's still the old page. It's not the cool, shiny new one, but uh, it still has all the information there. And we have a level one starting tomorrow. We have a level two starting tomorrow. And if you have any kind of experience already playing walking bass lines and jazz, 
then please, uh, you know, join us and um, uh, and you, you can join us straight up at level two. If it's new to you, then we start nice and easy. For example, what's a very easy way to walk a baseline? Very easy way to walk a baseline is to just say root, root, five right but it's not root, root, five, five, root, root, five, five. but it's root it's root root five five root root five five root root five five right because you have to make it swing and let me show you you know it always says it don't mean a thing if it don't have that swing you know there's all these these things people say but what does it really mean and where does a really good swing feel come from Please, Facebook and YouTube, put your suggestions into the chat. What makes a good swing feel? What's responsible for when it just feels good? Is there any way of quantifying it? Because I'm not a big believer of just saying, well, you either got it or you don't. No, I do not believe that. I don't believe that for a fact because I've helped people who have been told that before and I help them feel the swing just fine and make a walking baseline swing just perfectly. So I don't buy that, that you either have it or you don't. Okay, I got you, Fred, no no worries. Um, so we have a, um, we, we have links on that page where, you know, what's down there is the sign up links for tomorrow, level one and level two. Um, Thomas says continuous dynamic. Thomas is here. Thomas from the awesome Duzu Music Educators Duzu.com. Double O, double Z, double O. This is the music education of the future. I just posted it. Yeah, I think I posted it to all combinations yes um, so Tom is a wonderful musician good friend and we work together um, on on some great resources for music teachers and doozoo.com if you're teaching music and you want to have that wow factor with your students where you have all your assets right there ready to go if you have fantastic quality and have to worry about zoom original sound on off and hey i just sent you this pdf into your email can you look it up it's awful all music teachers on here you know what i mean right so none of that because you are in control of everything it works just in the browser i could go on and on i love Duzu. check it out everybody and yes continuous dynamic uh that's something that makes it swing for sure um and then uh, another thing that makes it swing is being aware of the subdivision. Now I have the most, the world's most non-swingy drummer right here. I apologize, my other drummer was not available at this time. But this one does the job for practicing, but you have to be seriously careful because if you practice, I'm going to use Iroh Pro. And if you use Iroh Pro too much, you have to be careful because you can really start sounding like this MIDI subdivision, right? But for the purposes of what I want to, pro what I want to present, it'll at least get us started because I just noticed my lovely little metronome is out of battery. So uh, I, I'm going to need to use Iroh Pro. So I'm, I'm using Iroh Pro. I took out the bass, I believe, didn't I? Okay, there you go. Now, the first thing you want to do when you listen, and I would, what I would really love to do is pull up YouTube, play with some Duke, play with some, you know, real jazz standard, but I can't because Facebook will pull us down immediately if we play uh, somebody's copyrighted work. So uh, I can't do that. So I real pro, you're going to help us out. Uh, but you got to imagine that drummer is swinging, right? But I'm, I'm, I keep talking about the swing feel and how can we, how do you make it swing? How do you make it swing? Facebook user says interaction with the drummer. Yep. The drummer tips us off to where they're feeling the subdivision. Now, question, is um, swing or jazz? We're talking about walking bass. There's much more to jazz, right? But right now we're talking about playing a medium swing in a walking bass fashion. And what, what is the subdivision? What's the subdivision? If you, if you feel that, what's the subdivision? That's when I just, you just feel the clicks or just go with the count, right? One, two, three, four. That's the time. That's the quarter notes. But how do the quarter notes get subdivided? 
they do not get subdivided by two, they get subdivided by three. And the way I like to talk about this is like this. Ding a la 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 ding a la. You could say if you wanted to, you could say one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? But um but it's um uh it's better my opinion after teaching many many uh students on rhythm it's better if you say uh, a word or syllables because counting always keeps us in our brains in our minds and it is much more powerful if you use um a word or syllables like the ding -a la and if you do that um then you're not in your analytical part of the brain but you're feeling it right so the first thing you want to do when you learn any jazz standard is to listen to the masters and do the as we call it in the jazz class do the dingalas and the way hey willie <laughs> good to see you seattle connections in the house um not seattle philly what am i doing uh philly um so Again, I'm going to play it, and what you want to do is just feel the dingala, 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 dingala. Because I will, <laughs> I can sometimes you learn the most by showing what you should not do. So I'm going to play a walking bass line to this. This is just a 2516 in the key of C. And I'm going to play a very, very, very simple walking bass line, and I'm going to purposefully not divide it by three, but I'm going to divide it by two. Watch this, and it's not going to swing. <laughs> Sound, folks. I'm getting some weird stuff here. So in my mind, I'm going one and two and three. Do you feel how that goes against the grain? It's not swinging. It's not swinging. But now I'm gonna think the ding a -less. So what I'm thinking now is ding a. I keep sitting on the note, and I lift it on the la. Now what I could also do to make it swing is connect the notes, right? Have no spaces in between. Here's a tip. You know how drummers sometimes play uh, on the riot cymbal? They open up typically the drummer positions like this, and they go tick 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 tick. Right on the hi-hat. When you do that, you can mu match that feel and also play the notes short, like I just did. Ding a la, ding a la, ding a la. Lift on the la though. Don't lift right in the middle or random, even worse, without a plan, right? But if you lift on ding a la, ding a la, ding a la, ding a la, then it starts, you know, starts swinging. And um, then the drama might open up, you know, maybe the B section. Maybe the third chorus of the solo, and then they go ding, ding, a ding, ding, dig it a ding, ding, dig it a ding, ding, right? They on that big right symbol. Sometimes they even have a chain on it to make the sustain longer, and then you can match that sustain. So now you might want to walk something like this. talking about the phrasing, right? I'm getting weird crackles. Are you guys not hearing that? Sound okay? I'm getting cutouts and stuff over here. But if it's all good, then I'm happy. Um, so now I connected all the notes, right? That's another way to swing. Where I'm still in my mind, though hearing the subdivision. I'm still hearing ding -a -la, ding -a -la, ding -a -la, ding -a -la. because every little thing that I do from like little embellishments, little, you know, extra things where I stop the note, where I start the note has to happen according to that subdivision. So feeling this subdivision is very, very important. And look, if you had, gosh, I wish I had a metronome that was actually functioning. Um, metronome, please. Oh, wait. We need the Duzo metronome right now. That's what we need. Metronome browser. I hope you can hear that. Um, oh, I hope you can hear that, y'all. Um, here's my metronome online. So let's see. Um, I'm going to go to like 80. Can y'all hear that metronome? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear that metronome.
Can y'all hear that? Can you hear the metronome? So this is, um, and what we like to do in jazz, we, okay, thank you. So again, I want you guys to, to guess. Am I swinging? Am I feeling threes? Or am I feeling one and two? And this is very slow, but I would like to, let's do the jazz thing. Let's go straight into it. So typically in jazz, we, uh, we feel two and four, right? Because that's where the hi-hat goes. Right? That's a hi-hat. And the hi-hat is on what beats in jazz? One, two, three, four. Ding-a-la, 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 ding-a-la. So that's how I'm sort of setting up the rhythmic makeup of this thing. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ding-a-la, 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 ding-a-la. Am I thinking straight? or swung you guys tell me i'm getting all sorts of farts and stuff out of that amp i don't know what's up uh so was that swinging or straight yes yeah, straight hi jody don't mean a thing if it ain't get that swing that's certainly correct yes that was straight that was straight now compare that with the ding alas right that's already swinging much more now when you have a metronome and, and for the purpose so on two and four i'm also giving the notes a slight little emphasis on two and four right just sort of underscore that feeling that's it's not downbeat oriented it's not straight down right it's it's a round thing you know if you start dancing a waltz which is in three like ding ala is three and i'm playing the ding i'm skipping or holding the ga and then I'm lifting for the la, ding a la, if I'm lifting, or I can just play all the way through, connected, legato as it's called, right? But let's talk a little more about swing feel. So if I, this is 60, so I'm gonna double this up right now, just so it's a little easier to hear for you, but this is essentially the same tempo, just now that I'm not counting the two and four, but the one, two, three, four. So, that must be a faster way than clicking the button X amount of times. There we go. Here's tempo 120. Very good. Um, so, this is 120, right? This is a good rhythmic drill. I gotta go in a few minutes. I got class. Practice group on rhythm. So, this is the rhythm and I'm just hitting my knee here, right? To find the subdivision in two, you do this. Because your body knows, you know, you're not going to do this, right? If you're in the groove, just nice and loose, just put your other hand up and you have the middle. Now, that's not swinging, obviously, right? But I just want to show you something. So these are eighth notes, right? And I'm going to think the ding-a-la, 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 ding-a-la. And I'm going to say the ding-a, 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 ding right? That's mathematically speaking the exact subdivision in three. Now in jazz, the feel is somewhere in between eighth notes, meaning dual, and the exact rhythmic subdivision of the ding-a-la. So... You may know that when you want somebody to swing an eighth note line, right? You can write down an eighth note line and just write it like this. Or if on the top left of the chart, it says swing it or bright or jazz or whatever. So you know it's swung. Then you read it like... Right, same tempo. But again, hear it with the quarter notes. Swung. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. But the, the, the feel 
is not gonna be mathematically exactly like midi, like I will pro does it, right? I will pro is like super, super, super literal. When you record with the professional uh, software, it gives you different ways to quantize. So because it sounds, if it sounds too mechanical, it just doesn't swing. So that's why in, uh, we use logic, but I'm sure it's the same with digital performer and, 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 and all the others. Um, but uh, what we do is, you know, if we need the drummer to sound a little bit more natural, we quantize it in a certain feel. And you have swing A and swing B and swing C, you know, with various variations of it being between the halfway point and between the a little bit, just a little swung point. And you can also notice that when you listen to singers, for example, or soloists, they might often take a lot of liberty and almost play it straight, especially at fast tempos, you know. Um, so um, keep that in mind, that swing feel, man, it's magic. And there's so much to say about it, so much that we can practice. And that's exactly what we do in our course. Course starts tomorrow course starts tomorrow and uh, I'm gonna try to post these links in there so you can still join if jazz is completely new to you I recommend level one we had a lot of fun in the last group we listened to a lot of tunes we figure out um, you know how to some surefire ways how to immediately start walking root root five five root five eight five right we just make it swing that root root five five That's my little shortcut for the one six two five. We just go root 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 root. Rhythm changes, for example, does that. I just call it making an X on the fretboard. I've taught so many jazz workshops, uh, and the, they, I once overheard one of the uh, one of the workshop leaders say, "We can't do rhythm changes because the bass players can't do that." I'm like, "Give me two minutes." <laughs> it's just like, make an X. You know, it gets you through it. A little variation later on, but you can totally do that one more time. And just stay on the five. That'll work, you know? So rhythm changes are usually quite fast. Um, there's also a lot we can say about that, but we do that in the class. We also play Don't Mean a Thing, uh, which Jody popped in the chat earlier. Let me just find those links for y'all. So I hope you can join us. It's a really fun class. If you have some experience, join us for level two. Um, we'll also talk about rhythmic variations because you don't want to do just that pulse. That pulse is extremely important, um, but uh, it is also copy link address. Here comes link one. This is from that web page that is right down here. So this is level one and this is level two. So starts tomorrow, everybody. And um, we can, um, you know, we talk a lot about um, different tunes, different styles. In level two, we'll also go a little bit into bossa. We'll go a little bit into soloing. We talk about rhythmic embellishments. We do that in level one already. Uh, little burps, little skips, little triplets, drops. There's lots of ways how you can liven up uh, a bass line. At quarter note pulse, feeling good. That's step one, right? And we learn about approach notes and enclosures and ways to make bass line sound melodic. And um, then I also want to talk a little bit in level two about what to do to be an effective comp person, rhythm section person, right? What do you do if somebody plays a solo? I mean, you, so many people are so worried about the notes, right? There are many easy and fast ways to get the notes down um, that are really shortcuts and I always say root root five five if you vary it just a little bit it's not gonna get you fired the most fancy notes but not a good feel you won't be invited so it's important for us to know how we can support a melody instrument a singer how we can support you know a soloist and what do you do when they're in their first chorus versus what do you do when they're in their fourth chorus and i have such an amazing teacher at the university of miami um Professor Vince Maggio, he has unfortunately since passed, um, but he he had a class. It was uh, tough, very tough, but I learned so much in that class. It was called Rhythm Section, and uh, I think I had 
I had two semesters of that with him. It was just amazing. How to comp effectively. What are you doing? Which range are you? What do you do if somebody brings up the energy, dynamics, which uh, Thomas mentioned earlier? What do you, how do you use that effectively, right? So there are so many ways how you can support a soloist. And if you pay to those, pay attention to those kind of things, you will get that callback. Um, I got to go over to the other channel and teach everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you consider joining us for jazz, easygoing jazz, uh, starting tomorrow, Fridays, 10 weeks live on Zoom, 10 a.m. Pacific for level two and level one is at noon Pacific and starts uh, tomorrow and then every week. If you miss one, it gets recorded. Not a problem. Hi, Tim Fletcher. Good to see you. Thank you all for joining. I, I really appreciate that. Um, we had the date wrong, but no matter, here I was. And um, and thank you all for joining. Hopefully some, some good gems in there for you. It's oftentimes not really talked about that much, but I find these, these details extremely important and very empowering because then you can help somebody, you know, make it swing. <laughs> all right, everybody, have a fantastic day. I'm going to go teach. Have a good one all. Cheers.